out with today's sermon is just do it. Just do it. You know, we have to be in the business of showing mercy to people, all right? Sometimes we get, there's so much that goes on in, in the church, sometimes we get a little confused. But we have to be in the business, that's a core principle of being a Christian, to show mercy. We have to be in the business of showing mercy and not looking for reasons to justify our own unrighteousness. If we are ever to please Jesus, this is critical. I think if we worked harder at helping people to the light and work less at beating them over the head with the lamp, that the kingdom of God will experience a massive <coughs> influx of people looking for a better way. We have to refocus on how we do what we do. Not that you, you don't continue to, to preach the gospel, but the gospel draws. We all have to be willing to look in the mirror and admit what we used to be mm -hmm. and where we come from. And we can maybe learn to be a little bit more patient with folk. I tell mothers all the time that have sons and daughters that are in those early 20s that kind of explore in life. Mm -hmm. Just keep praying for them. Yeah. Calm down. Just keep, Amen. keep praying for them. That's the best you can do. My mama, she, God bless that woman. But she couldn't tell me that. At that age, man, I had to figure this thing out for myself. She could have lightning and thunder come from heaven. But the best thing she could do for me is just to pray for me. I just had to figure some things out. And so I tell people, that when you have children, just, just pray for them. You can talk all you want. You can talk till you're blue in the face or purple uh -huh. or whatever the colors are. You, you, can, you can talk till your blood pressure run up. But if you pray for them, that'll be a lot more help. We, we have to learn that when we're dealing with folks, we can't be so quick to judge. And, Come on now. And, and if we're, 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 you know, this is New Age. A lot of folks, they ain't been saved since they were two years old. A lot of folks, they didn't come, have to come to church every day. So the people got different backgrounds. There are a lot of there are a lot of distractions out there. So as Christians, we have to learn to be a lot more patient. I don't really want to use the word tolerance because sometimes it's ambiguous in how that word is applied. But but we do have to be patient with people and, and see people, but we have to be merciful. In verses 25 through 28, the scripture says. One day, an expert in religious law, he stood up to test Jesus by asking him this question. He said, teacher, what must we do to receive eternal life? So Jesus is, is there, this expert, this very religious person stood. Um, Jesus, what is it that we need to do to to receive eternal life. And Jesus responded to it and said, well, if you don't know nothing else, you know the law. That's what real religious people, they know, they know the law. They, they, they know, well, they, 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 they know the stuff, the, the, the stuff they've been doing all, all, they might not be able to tell you exactly what the scriptures say. But they, they know the law. And he says, you know the law? What does the law of Moses say? Tell me how you read it. And the man said, you, you got to love the Lord your God with all your, we know that, right? You got to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. And, 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 and then he said, and then you got to love your neighbor. The same way you love yourself. That's, 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 that's it. That's, that's what Moses said. And then Jesus responded to him saying, you, right, you got a hundred on that chest. If you do that, you're going to live. Well, a 
religious, a really religious person, he stood up to test Jesus. He wasn't really looking for him. And asked to help him live, live a better life. Mm -hmm. The scripture says he stood up to test him. Try to find a part in his game. Try to be able to, for him to say some words that he can take him and twist around him. And sometimes we, we've been in the church so long, instead of just trying to just do it right in a pure and right way, sometimes there's some things that we kind of know in our heart because we lose sleep every now and then. Our conscience bothers us, conviction bothers us, we get convicted. And, 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 and some things that we know that God wants us to be different in. And, 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 and sometimes we're not so in love with Jesus where we just say, yes, God, if you want me to do this differently, I'll do it differently. Sometimes we try to see if we can make that word fit our mess. Right. <laughs> we try to see if we can make that word fit the stuff that we're being convicted for doing. And this man stood up to test Jesus because he wanted to take those very words and try to use them to justify what he's doing. That's what he said right there in, 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 in 29. In 29 it said the man wanted to justify his, his actions. So he asked Jesus, well, Jesus, okay, that's what Moses said. I got to love God with all my heart, with all my soul, and with all my mind, all my strength. I got to love him with all that. Then I got to love my neighbor as myself. And, and, and so he kind of felt like he had that first account. Oh, he had it. So he said, but I do not have a problem with this neighbor thing. But I might be able to take his word and make that neighbor thing fit the way it won't make me look like I'm living wrong. But I, yeah, I, I do have a problem. I don't like white people. I don't like black people. I don't like poor people. I don't like people I work with. I don't like young boys that walk around with their hands down below their bottoms. I don't like girls that got tattoos. I, that's a quote I don't like in God that bother me about all these people I don't like. Maybe I can work with that word maybe and be justified hating the tea party. Maybe I can take that word neighbor and be justified at hating the homeless person laying on the side of the road that I don't even really want to deal with. Maybe I, I can work with that, that's the, that neighbor. I think I can get that word right there. And then I can come out this thing still feeling good about myself. And so he, he, he just really he wanted to justify his actions. And so he tested Jesus further. And said, well, Jesus, who is my neighbor then? Teacher, who is my neighbor? To justify as it relates to theology, theology is the study of God. To justify means to declare or make right in the sight of God. And so he was trying to use Jesus' words to make himself look right, even though he was being convicted of trying to use Jesus' words to somehow twist them and make himself look right in the eye of God. Now, I'm going to let you in on a little secret here. And you don't have to pay for this. You know when you're right, and you know when you're wrong. Come on, man. You, there's something that speaks to us. There's something that just tells us that, that this is the right way and, and this is the wrong way. But I'll tell you where I start trying to find. Well, I, I tell you where I'm starting to slip. If I need for my wife to tell me how good a man I am, all right. that's a sign right there. I'm all, I already know it's something in the so I'm in the party room. If I need for my children to tell me how good of a daddy I am, and I'm asking them, well, what would you, you love your daddy? 
I'm a good dad, right? Uh, if, I, if I got to find ways to justify myself, there's probably some things I already know about that I need to get fixed. Uh -huh. All right. if, if, if I'm a good husband, I don't have that. I can, she, I can look at her. I can look at how she look at me. All right. I tell her that, that she respects me as a man. If I'm a good daddy, I can, I can look at the way that they, they look at me. Come on, now. All right. And tell, and, and tell that they respect me as a dad. I, I, I don't need to beg you. This, I don't need to twist your words. Well, well okay, I know I wasn't there, but, 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 but I, no, I, I can tell the way you look at me if, if, if I'm living up to the being who I am. And, 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 but, but when I start trying to get you to say the words that I can start working to make me feel or look right in the sight of God, that's probably something I already know that I need uh -huh. to work on. Who is my, my name? Well, Jesus replies in verses 30 through 35 with a story. And I like Jesus because, you know, sometimes you just got to take it down to folk level. Sometimes folks seem like they just can't understand when you say, you got to love them like you love yourself. Well, well, well you yeah, understand that. But they just don't get, so Jesus tells a story. And Jesus says, he says, let me tell you something, there was a Jewish man. And he was traveling on, on a trip. He was coming from, going from Jerusalem to Jericho. And, and, and then he was attacked by, by bandits, <coughs> some unsavory people. And, and, and they, they stripped him of his clothes, they robbed him, they took his money, and they, they beat him up, and they, and they left him on the street, half dead. Uh -huh. And then it, it says that by, by chance, Look, 
by day, like by being down day. Preacher walk by him and judge him. Church will walk by him. But a despised Samaritan that was willing to listen to that voice that spoke to his heart. He saw him there. And he felt deep pity. He felt. He felt deep pity. And the verse goes on, it says that he knelt down beside him, came down to his level. And then he soothed his wounds. He treat your neighbor as you would like for them for others to treat you. All right, though. I was laying down that bed. Would I want somebody to walk on the other side of the room? If I was struggling with life and trying to figure this thing out, would I want people to keep condemning me and judging me and walking by me and acting like they're too good to talk to me? Well, is that what I, but this Samaritan, he felt deep pity. He knelt down, he got down on his level, soothed his wounds with medicine, bandaged them. Then he put the man on his own donkey, took him to an end. All right. And he took care of him. The next day, he went to the innkeeper. Mm -hmm. And he says, here's two pieces of silk. This ought to be able to take care of his, of his lodge. And I got it by taking good care of it. I, I still have stuff to do. But I wasn't so busy with life All where right. I couldn't take time out to take care and show pity and feel pity for a brother or sister that was hurting. Mm -hmm. I nurtured them back to to help, but they still need lodging. Yeah, yeah. Here's a little money, and, and, and if this don't take care of his lodging until he's able to get up and out on his feet, when I come back, I'll pay you the rest. Jesus spoke to this man that was trying to justify his own actions. All right. Who is my name? Jesus shares a story about three people. Mm -hmm. One, leader in the church. One, a member of the church. Come on, man. And one despised by the church. Mm -hmm. He said, who is it that God is saying, that the word is saying, that if you love your neighbor, as, if you love this person as yourself, that you can have this eternal life that you're trying to just be about? In verse 36, Jesus said, I'll tell you what. I ain't gonna tell you. I'm gonna let you answer your own question. You know, sometimes that's the best way, that's the, the wisest way to get counsel sometimes, just to, to lay it out there. Mm -hmm. And look, let folk answer their own question. Mm -hmm. Most times folk know the answer. They just don't want to speak the answer. <coughs> You know, there's power in the tongue. If I'm just trying to speak, speak in my mouth what I, what I should be doing, mm -hmm. I might get the conviction and the power to do it. Jesus says, I tell you what. He says, which of these three would you say was the neighbor to the man who was attacked by bandits, to the young boy that was beat up by life? To All the right. young man that was beat up by life. All right. To the young woman that took an unfortunate turn in life. To the woman that the man that, that life beat down and left the dead. Mm -hmm. Who do you think was the name? The man replied. I saw on Facebook this week. A couple of days ago where there was a, a young boy, a young man, maybe 20, 19, 20 years old. All right, uh, This will happen to be black, but it really doesn't matter. He posted a suicide letter on Facebook, right here in St. Right here in St. Augustine, not so All right. He posted a suicide letter on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Then he killed himself. All right. 
many friends and acquaintances commented with disbelief because it appeared that this young man had no reason to kill himself. Come on now. But had every reason to live. Yeah. You can't always believe what you see on folks' face. Come on now. You can't always believe the way the book, the color looks on the book. And disbelief. But we never know what people are going through. All right, now. And rarely classify folk as our neighbor. Maybe one of us saw that young man in his early adulthood, just enjoying life. Probably never had no care in the world. Maybe one of us saw him around here in judgment. Maybe one of us have seen his fear. Maybe there's somebody that we work with on our job that we, sure, that's, that's not my neighbor. God does not require me to love. They're different from me. They don't live in my neighborhood. The Samaritan did not live in his neighborhood. The Jew that was beat down. But Jesus said that that was His name. We are extremely quick to judge and come on now. And not as quick to show mercy. Amen. Allow me an opportunity. I want to read the suicide letter. This young man posted on Facebook. His name is Andrew Ward. He says, I love you all. There was no reason to this. I've just been thinking for years. I can no longer do it. Death is my choice. Finally, I feel content. I love you, Jay. You are my only true friend. I don't know how I got faded and I just gave up. And I say blank is a curse word. Blanket. I wonder what the other life is like. Can you blame me? I'm your brother. At least one of us was mad enough to do with me. I never cared about sex, drugs. I just wanted to be one. All right. I never would. I want a commitment. Only one person, Jeremiah Tyrone Adams, showed me commitment. I love you, Dad. You don't even understand. I, I'm killing myself. You were the only person I cared about fully. I'm the reason you got your life straight. I'm your wedding toast. I'm the reason St. Augustine changes. I don't care anymore. God has called me. Now I am son. Read this and understand. It's never too late. But for me, it was because I never cared for God until it was too late. Committed suicide is not the ultimate sin denying the Holy Ghost who God is. Understand, please. I did this for you. Ha, 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 ha. It was so blanking awesome hanging out with you all. But I feel like the reason you began to love me is for those exact reasons. I'm chosen, chosen to show you life and change for anyone. Blanking A. I love you all, especially Jeremiah Tyrone Adams. You were the greatest thing to ever to happen to me. I understand true love, Rosalie. I love you so much, even in death, I thought of you. You were the only one I mentioned for. Hey fam, like Josh, Victoria, Cecil, Matthew, Mama Bell, Ashley, Kaylee, Paul Jr., Little Pad, all my blanks. 
whatever, it's all good. I love you all. I just gave up. This is your tattoo. The devil may take us, but God delivers us. Blank, I do not know how to end this. I'm killing myself. But you know me. I got to make a show of it. Kind of sucks my roommate won't get the way this. But this is the thing that you do alone. I love you, Jay. I love you, Al. Yes, I, I love you, Lisa. I love you, Rosalie Santiago. Always. I love you, Jeremiah. I love you, Ashley. I love you all. But most of all, I hate myself. I wonder if this young man ever came in contact with a Christian. Could have made a difference in his life by simply viewing him as a neighbor that needed to love as we love ourselves. Jesus replied to the man in verse 37. And the man says, The one who showed mercy is my neighbor. Jesus simply replied to him, Well, now you go do the same. Thank you. 